Hey, Ghost Heads, it's Heidi from Channeling Spirits. We're on part four of our series exploring the history and physics behind the Ghostbusters equipment. We're still building on the science of our previous videos, so be sure to check them out first. We've talked about catching and containing ghosts, but how do you detect them? Like the proton pack and the containment unit, the original film never names it the PKE meter. Though there is mention of PKE. PKE valences. A PKE surge of incredible, even dangerous proportions. And psychokinetic energy. Psychokinetic energy. So where did the name come from? Psycho what? Psychokinesis was coined in Henry Holt's book on the cosmic relations. It's a portmanteau of psyche, meaning mind, soul, or spirit and kinesis, meaning motion or movement. J.B. Ryan, the founder of parapsychology, used the term to describe direct influence upon external objects or events without muscular or other body intervention. His initial example was influencing the fall of dice. But the question is, when did Ghostbusters use the term PKE meter to measure such psychokinesis? Well, the August 5th, 1983 draft mentions Egon traveling the library looking at his meters. And the next page says he edges closer to take balance readings. Later in the Sedgwick Hotel, he passes his sensor over the top of the door. Ray checks his balance meter but up to this point, none of these devices are specifically called the PKE meter. It isn't until page 92 of the August draft, which states the needle on his PKE meter jumps into the red. In the official novelization, Ghostbusters, the Supernatural Spectacular by Richard Mueller, Egon has a plasmometer, which displays a pattern of blinking lights. He also uses an oroscope which is described as a black teardrop-shaped device with wings. Bankman thought it looked like it had come from one of those sex places on 42nd Street. You hound. But neither of the films ever call it the PKE meter. The closest we get is in Ghostbusters 2, when Ray says, I've got 1118 on the PKE. But in the earlier September 29th, 1988 draft, the PKE meter can't find any readings for the runaway buggy. Only the newly introduced Geiger meter does. So when was the name officially spoken? Like most of the tools, it was the real Ghostbusters. In the first episode, Ghosts Are Us, Egon states, Not according to my PKE meter, Peter. The animated show expanded the look and abilities of the device. It could detect multiple entities, three class five full torso apparitions, know their class, a full magnitude class 10, as well as scan them. Kenner would introduce a PKE meter with their real Ghostbusters proton pack toy set that showcased the famous radar ghost image. But the animated show's PKE meter would vary from precise imaging to vague sonar detection. Seems like we're getting closer to it. Its sequel, Extreme Ghostbusters, would show the real Ghostbusters PKE meter and have it updated. You work up the specs, I'll do the rest. In 2009, the real Ghostbusters PKE meter was featured as an Easter egg in Ghostbusters the video game. Two years after Vigo's defeat, the PKE meter was greatly enhanced. It is able to detect not only hidden psychokinetic activity. Your meter will flash and buzz when it detects a potential signal. The paragoggles are linked directly to your active PKE meter. This lets you see otherwise undetectable phenomena while you track it. Ghost trails, object auras, all kinds of cool events. But also objects concentrated with it. An active sample is something you can collect like a cursed artifact. It can scan entities and categorize them. This will analyze the ghost's PKE signatures and cross-reference them with your online Tobin Spirit Guide database. But also works as the game's HUD. 
But where did the original PKE meter prop come from? An Iona SP1 shoe polisher. It's my philosophy, a $100 shine and a $3 pair of boots. It was gutted and modified with electronics and extending wings added. Even the real Ghostbusters Screaming Heroes Egon figure came exclusively with a PKE meter, but with a good reason. Harold Ramis was the only one who knew how to use it. This piece of equipment, only Harold got to learn how to use it. He had a sort of a secret way to use the three buttons that were on it that made the uh, little wings rise and fall. The prop would extend its afterlife to appear in other movies like They Live and Suburban Commando after the Ghostbusters duology. How it was created in-universe is less interesting. According to IDW's Ghostbusters Year One, Issue Two, Egon mentions working on devices to track and measure alternate forms of sentient energy when he first meets Ray. Ray later admits, I wish I could take more credit, but Egon had the PKE meter pretty well sussed on his own. He did suggest a few tweaks, but that's it. But on the IDW crossing over trading card for Ray, it gives equal credit to both scientists for all of the Ghostbusting equipment. Ghostbusters Year One also mentions that adding a new vibration function, which players could experience in the 2009 video game. However, Egon warns not to press the two buttons at the same time. But what is the PKE meter? This is called a PKE meter. It registers psychokinetic energy, which allows you to determine if there is or was a ghost in the area. In the context of Ghostbusters, PKE refers to an ill-defined force that influences the observable environment. The film posits that consciousness exists even after death, or as a conglomerate of residual emotions and forces capable of affecting the environment. So how do you measure a yet unprovable force? You measure its reaction. Let's see what happens when we take away the puppy. The PKE meter works like other gaseous detectors with visual indicators. Uh, he uh, just passed gas. Catch the next one. Relax, sir. We handle foul vapors all the time. The meter is actually measuring the amount of negatively charged ions and free neutrons in a given area. As we've mentioned before, ectoplasmic manifestations ionize particles in the air. With sudden materializations, the ionization of atoms can eject neutrons. The detection of free neutrons is displayed as spikes on the screen which quickly dissipate due to beta decay. To operate it, it must first be turned on by a switch at the bottom of the handle. A little tip, you always want to make sure they're switched on. In order to make an accurate measurement, the device must be placed on the proper setting. Low ionization, mute, and high ionization. The low ionization is best used in indoor settings where concentrations of ions range between 100 to 300 ions per cubic centimeter, like inside a library. Raymond, look at this. The high ionization setting is more effective in outdoor locations where ion concentrations range from 1,800 to 2,000 ions per cubic centimeter like when you're picking up the Keymaster. Are you the gatekeeper? You better bring him inside. Negatively charged ions pass through a tube containing platinum electrodes and boron trifluoride. They collide with particles, breaking them into positively charged ions and electrons that travel to the electrodes. The ionized gas creates further ionizations, which create an avalanche of charged particles that are measured. The neutrons having a neutral charge are slowed down and interact with the boron nuclei, producing alpha particles. 
These charged particles then trigger the normal avalanche process. The avalanche process is outputted as a current pulse to an audio amplifier and rate meter. The PKE meter displays the output as a series of auditory beeps, flashing LEDs, and expanding wings. Tracking an ectoplasmic manifestation then becomes a matter of following the increase of those outputs. I feel like Bill Nye the science guy. <laughs> but what do you think? Are we onto something or full of crap? My dad says you guys are full of crap. If you liked this video and think we deserve it, I think we hit the honey pot. Please subscribe. For those interested in a blueprint of the PKE meter, check out the link to our official merchandise. Yes, we made those. We also have the Proton Pack and Ghostbuster Trap available. Select Patreon tiers, get 5 to 10% off. As always, keep coming back for more spooktacular videos. I'm Heidi with Channeling Spirits, and thanks for watching. And Boron Trifluoride. You're killing me, Devin. Watch your profanity.